Good evening and uh, welcome in this uh, wonderful palace together with uh, Palazzo Medici and Palazzo Strozzi, one of the most important uh, uh, homes uh, in Florence. It was built by one of the greatest architects, uh, Giuliano da San Gallo. Uh, we are here, the owner uh, of the and the representative of the family of, uh, of the family Gondi, and he told me incredible stories uh, of this palace. I could uh, tell you incredible things from Charmagne uh, to now. Uh, they were uh, the bankers of uh, the uh, King of France. They were. Um, one of them was uh, mentioned by Dante in the Paradise uh, of the Divine Comedy, and so on, so on. There are, the palace was uh, bigger than this, and unfortunately in the 19th century, for uh, in my opinion the most stupid reason, a part was uh, uh, destroyed, and in that part, uh, uh, it's sure, it's documented, Leonardo da Vinci has uh, uh, lived for a while and made uh, some of his uh, masterpieces. The legend says that uh, uh, probably even Mona Lisa was uh, uh, painted here. You can imagine, uh, it's a place of, of masters. And uh, these are people, uh, these people here are masters uh, of the greatest bespoke made to measure shorts uh, in the world. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Crompton uh, for this initiative. Uh, personally, I love uh, bespoke shirts uh, as a person, as a user, uh, but also as a CEO of uh, Albini Group. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, uh, personalization and craftsmanship uh, is uh, one uh, extremely important uh, element uh, of uh, fashion uh, today. Uh, everybody today would like to have uh, something uh, personalized. Uh, the product uh, you wear must uh, have your values, must uh, represent uh, yourself, uh, uh, must uh, say something to you. And uh, what else uh, than uh, a, a bespoke uh, garment, a bespoke shirt, uh, what else uh, can have this uh, uh, reason? And uh, so I think uh, it's the right time to speak about uh, uh, bespoke. Uh, and we will do with uh, this master chosen by Simon and uh, thank you Simon for such a, a great choice uh, we, you know, of different people, different style coming from uh, uh, many countries, many continents, uh, each of them uh, with uh, a personality uh, and the tradition behind them. So it will be very interesting to hear from them. Uh, I have many shirts uh, coming from these people personally. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, believe me, uh, they are great, all of them, but slightly different, with, with a different personality. And in a shirt, uh, you can uh, express many things. Uh, and uh, I'm very curious about uh, the opinions uh, that uh, these uh, uh, great shirt makers have uh, about the present and the future of uh, uh, bespoke shirts. As a company, Albini, we took uh, a big risk uh, recently, recently in uh, renovating uh, the all the Thomas Mason bespoke uh, group to make it uh, richer, more modern, and more uh, uh, close, easy for the new generation, for young people. Uh, that is uh, a, a big, 
a big challenge, the make to measure short for young people. Uh, we have developed uh, an app uh, which uh, you can see, but uh, you can uh, also already start to use uh, to make the choice of fabrics uh, uh, easier, uh, uh, more technological, but again uh, uh, to make uh, uh, the new generations, the millennials, close to the made to measure uh, uh, bespoke world. Uh, so for us, uh, bespoke is uh, a, an important form of art. Uh, as a company, definitely we will, we will uh, go on investing, investing uh, in fabrics as we have already done from 140 years, from the best raw materials to the finished product, but also with the, the new possible technologies, as I said, to make uh, this world uh, so precious of uh, bespoke uh, close to young people and, uh, and easy to, to, to use. Uh, I hope that uh, this panel uh, with these uh, great protagonists uh, can uh, give some answers to my uh, questions, uh, my thinking, uh, and uh, what Simon has uh, uh, intention to ask and to. So they w I give to Simon the word. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Shirtmakers Symposium. Uh, my name is Simon Crompton. I'm a British author and the founder of the website permanentstyle.com. Um, many thanks to Silvio and the Albini team for putting together a, a really a wonderful event in an amazing location. I feel really honoured to be here and kind of have, be, be likened, well, I wasn't likened, but have, you know, be likened to some of the masters of Italian painting is quite, it's quite nice. Um, this is the, the sixth uh, event we've done in the symposium series over the last couple of years. Um, we've done the best um, bespoke shoemakers, bespoke tailors, um, young tailors, retailers, all the kind of different angle on the industry. And one of the reasons I was kind of, I get very excited about doing these kind of events is I feel there aren't many opportunities to talk about this with real substance and analysis of the kind of things we do in the industry, to have a, real, you know, a friendly but quite serious discussion about these kind of things and get away from some of the superficial aspects of the fashion industry in general, I guess. Um, so it's really great doing this again, I really look forward to it. Um, and I was very excited actually particularly about doing shirts this time around because I think often shirts are things that get a little bit ignored as part of the male wardrobe. Um, I think I remember doing the spoke tailors a couple of years ago and setting them up and they look wonderful all this, their shirts and ties all the example suits we had but with everything together it becomes about a look and about a style very much um, whereas the shirts we have outside all that is stripped away and suddenly it's just about the products and it's about the details and I think I like that and really focus on something very specific so I'm looking forward to that um, when we select the speakers for the symposium that we do we want the very best um, in the world, but we also want a bit of kind of diversity. So we've deliberately picked um, speakers from different parts of the world and slightly different traditions to try and give some variety and context, which hopefully will be interesting. Um, and I should just say we're going to talk for about 45 minutes, something like that, and then there'll be time for questions at the end, if that's okay. So please, if you have anything you'd like to ask people, bear it in mind, and we'll have some time at the end. Um, so our speakers from, as I said, some of the best from around the world are Darren Beaver from Bud Shirts on the right hand side. Uh, we have Justin Chang from Ascot Chang in Hong Kong. We have Luca Avatabe from uh, Naples here. We have Jack Spetchin all the way from Beverly Hills in the States. Uh, we have Paolo Mathes on the end, also from Italy. Um, I'm just going to ask them very quickly to spend a couple of minutes introducing themselves, telling us a little bit about where they're from, the kind of the heritage of their companies, and then we'll get into some of the questions. So, Darren, please ask. Darren Tiernan, um, from Bud Shirt Makers, Piccadilly in London. Um, 
we've been established in the Piccadilly Arcade since 1910. Um, I've been involved in shirts for 30 years this year, so it's a an anniversary for me. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah please, yeah. Right. Um, Justin Chang, uh, I'm from Ascot Chang, third generation uh, family business. Uh, my grandfather started the company in 1953. He apprenticed uh, before that under a shirt maker in um, Shanghai. As we look at the patterns, it's definitely a more British system uh, from back then. Uh, and since then, uh, Hong Kong since 1953, uh, we've expanded um, with shops in New York and LA. And um, I joined the business, oh, sorry, my father joined the business uh, 77, and I joined the business uh, about nine years ago. Okay, okay. Luca? Okay. Uh, my name is Luca Vitampile, I am from Napoli. And I do this, uh, I make shirts since I was 18, so it's almost 20 years, so a little bit less than you. And uh, well, it's the third generation um, business. So my grandparents started, and then my father, you know, keep uh, continuous business, and then I'm trying to to do this, uh, and maybe we we will keep to continue doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Jackson Pagian from Beverly Hills, uh, family business, uh, my, dad, my dad started and uh, I started when I was 23, it's been 34 years now, and, uh, and uh, my brother is in it and uh, it's a family business, we have a uh, third generation now, they're coming up and uh, it's all about this book. Fantastic. And how? Uh, second generation family business. My father started in 1958, and almost 30 years that they work in the business. More or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I wanted to start off by talking about, um, I guess, uh, a growth that I think a lot of people have seen in the spoke in the last few years. Um, have you seen? Uh, a real growth and interest in bespoke in your kind of business and kind of what is driving that, what kind of customers and so on. Maybe Darren, you want to start? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think, you know, the advent of, of websites and blogs, yeah. you know, like Permanent Star, things like that, has certainly made people aware of bespoke in general, mm -hmm. bespoke shirts. Um, I think you were right, I think we've always been the forgotten men of bespoke a little bit. You know, <laughs> I mean, um, the tailors of our desk are posing the shoemaker. Sorry, it's great you've done that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I think it, it gives people a little bit more information, mm. you know, and there's no kind of fear of walking into a West End shirt maker as, as we are. Mm. Um, and, you know. So you find a lot of people have kind of, they've done their research first and read everything yeah. online and they come in very informed. <clears throat> yeah, and um, which is quite nice as well, you know, because they can come in and they can have a, a chat with you about this and they might mention something. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's quite nice that they, they've got a bit more information and they've chosen you. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you know, because there are lots of good shirt makers around. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that they've, they've chosen you to commission something mm -hmm. for them. Um, so, yeah, but it, it, it's, for us as a business, mm -hmm. it's um, we've seen a good growth of the last five or six years. It's just Really? Gone like that. Um, I think for us, I think the fact that we have cutters on site upstairs, mm. you know, is a big, big thing for people. Mm. And you know, they come in, they see me, they get measured, I make their pattern, I do the fitting. It feels quite immediate, and you get a good experience as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so certainly for, for for me and, and for us at Buds, yeah, I think it's um, yeah, it, it's it's looking healthy. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, do you, do you see that in Asia a lot? Because I, I, I guess I'm much more aware in the US or UK, but less so in Asia. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's pretty much it's what Darren has said. It's the, the internet blogs, such as yourself, um, forums. I think the overall education level towards bespoke, not just shirts, but bespoke suits, bespoke shoes, mm. has kind of given rise to a uh, groundswell of. I mean, look at the faces today. It's all young, so <laughs> <laughs> they're like so popular in the US. Yeah. So it's um, uh, we've definitely seen a rising number of younger men who come in and they're looking for something really specific. And mm. 
they're looking for a, a certain style to their their, their, their colors of the shirt or a, a certain fabric that they can't find elsewhere. Yeah, and also the fact that when you you know when you get a bespoke suit and your 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 sleeves and then you're like oh how, how much uh, shirt needs to show and all that and that just leads you to end up going custom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, uh, maybe maybe <coughs> interested. I mean, not everyone knows, but you make make shirts for a lot of Hollywood celebrities and people. You have you know. A lot of your own, I guess, um, promotion that comes naturally as well. Have you seen any effect from interest from online, or because you've already had a big reputation? Well, <clears throat> I mean, the girl has been always there for us. I mean, since I've been there, but this past ten years, that it's the internet, online, the blogs, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. Uh, you know, drives a lot of traffic in, and especially um, uh, the the niche that we have. It's the entertainment that. They seen that shirt on such and such, mm. and I guess you could now find out who made it. Okay. Uh, Obviously, that really yeah, drives us a lot of business. In the mm. meantime, it's the young, the, the young gentlemen. They're, uh, uh, you know, it, it's everything is out there. They know what they want when they walk in. Pretty much, they know it, and then we guide them, and we tell them if you do it this way, of course, it's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Uh, it's. It's there. Yeah. And do you, do you um, I think often we, we often uh, deride celebrities for being very badly dressed when you see them on the catwalk or whatever it is, you know, they're kind of wearing well, perhaps in a slightly flashy suits or whatever it is. Do any of the celebrities are aware of any of those kind of blogs or anything else or not really? Or are they told to by the stylist, whoever it might be? They got a lot of stylists now. They got a lot of stylists that are out there, especially the, you know, the club that we had. Uh, we had quite a few that they wore our shirts, but meantime, some of the stylists are they young. They don't know about the, uh, the you know, the aspect, the tradition, and yeah. we have to guide them. And they're in front of the actor or you know their customer, mm -hmm. and you can't kind of put them down to you, but you gotta indirectly say that you know, this is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we guide them as, as, and we show them if you do it this way, this is what's going to happen. Do you ever get young guys who come in who kind of think they know more than they do and they're a bit off? We have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, uh, I mean, somehow we do let them know that if we take you out, it's gonna, we're gonna, you know, go into difficulties. That's why okay. we make it very clear, you know, I can take it here, but this is what's it's gonna, gonna be happening. to it. Yeah. Okay. Just, but you, yeah, you would notice, did you have that issue as well? Or? I, I think maybe it's, it's you just have to kind of let them know the expectation that oh, we could do this for you. Yeah. Um, it, and it could just be as simple as an argument over the length of a shirt. And maybe they want it shorter to wear outside. Mm -hmm. and, and then maybe the shirt's more, it, it, it's a style that's maybe more suited to be worn inside. Yeah. yeah. You might try to okay. give them a bit of advice there. So yeah, just make them aware of the, of the implications of exactly. their own choices. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. okay, don't have to be in full position. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Paolo, I'm quite interested in the, um, whether you see this with young people in Italy, because Italians are always telling me that the, the young Italians don't care and they're, they're too much into fashion and they want everything now. Do you still you see young people in Italy kind of interested very much in the craft? Yes, not so easy. Not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> we try to uh, develop the market of the young people to come into the culture of the, the well-dressed mm -hmm. because it's difficult because we see in the, in the street they are not so well <laughs> dressed. <laughs> Very so diplomatic of you. Yeah. This is a problem <laughs> having it now. Yeah. But we try it so we do our best. And do you occasionally get young people who are feel they've read up on this or done a lot of research and then they're kind of uh, a bit more informed, I guess? Yes. Oh, good. So something to see. I wanted to kind of maybe next touch on uh, kind of varying styles around the world. We'll talk about that as much as we can. Variations. Um, I guess maybe start with you, you, Luca. I kind of feel that maybe the different styles in Neapolitan is the slightly easiest to define, maybe, and that it's more focused on. It's the more yeah. Do you think you agree? Yeah, definitely. It's the one that uh, everybody knows in uh, around the world. So. Um, 
as it's made in Napoli, it's uh, you know it, it's good. You know, so uh, we are lucky. <laughs> No, no, I mean, it's, uh, this is important, it's like uh, something, a plus, no? Yeah. But uh, sometimes the, the, the details are too exaggerated, so I don't like that. You so don't like, I like big fluffy sleeves and too no, much hand no. detailing and so on? I don't like when the shirt is too tight, mm -hmm. too skinny, so... Uh, I Do like think Italians have a tendency to want that as well? Uh, a bit too tight some skinny. people, they think that a bespoke shirt is a tight shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and um, with monograms. Monograms and ties. Let's go. But it's something a little bit different. So it's very, it's very. Um, uh, every every client uh, knows what what he wants, mm -hmm. and so we try to to give them uh, what he wants. So mm -hmm. uh, of course we have some uh, high hard hold. Mm -hmm. We have something that comes from the tailoring. Mm -hmm. So Neapolitan tailoring has some. Uh, uh, detail and we have the same in the shirt so high arm hole mm -hmm. around the sleeve mm -hmm. um, some wrinkle mm -hmm. in the back but it's for the movement this is mm -hmm. very useful for the movement so some people don't know that and uh, that's it soft colors mm -hmm. and not stiff at all mm -hmm. so and that's it so <laughs> no. I, I think it's I guess a lot of those things are often fairly obvious in the you know, wrinkles or the hand detailing, often you can, that's very immediate, obviously you can see that very clearly. I kind of feel a lot of the other regional styles, it's very hard to pin down, you know? I mean, when just for example, you were talking about having, looking at the old pattern to see they're very English, what kind of things were you looking at to kind of to decide that? I think when we were looking at the pattern, it was, um, I think number one, compared to the Italians, I found that our articles were relatively bit straighter here. Yeah. Okay. The, Italians, the Italians can, there's more curvature here. Which I thought was really interesting, mm. um, and then obviously the, the, the spalla and the, and the gathering at the back, mm. and also our, uh, our collars that traditionally uh, we we've done were, were stiffer collars, um, okay. stiffer collars, and uh, maybe not so much roll here and, mm -hmm. and a bit straighter and a bit straighter sharper. and the sharper okay. exactly, mm. uh, and um, you know the Italians they have the collar roll and all that, mm. um, but for us I think what's interesting is Hong Kong is such a <laughs> metropolitan kind of international city is that we've gotten customers from everywhere from Italians, French, English mm -hmm. who kind of bring their own ideas about a shirt and they've kind of requested us can you do this, can you do this <laughs> and we try our best to um, to do it for them and in, in the process we've learned a lot of different things as well. That must be so hard when you're trying to do a new technique I mean it's one thing to do a new pattern or a new style and saying this is well, if you want it, that's fine. Right. But doing a whole new technique when you're, you still have to put your name on it, your reputation still relies yes. on that, right? And it <laughs> so must be... I, I remember, I think, this was maybe when I joined, I don't think we did any spala. Um, and then I think a lot of customers, um, especially younger customers, started requesting it. Mm. And at first we were saying, no, we can't do it. Um, it's not our style. Uh, but we started kind of experimenting it. Maybe we might have bought a few to take apart and figure out. And then uh, we kind of... I wouldn't say it's a full Italian spa, but we, we have had some gathering that we can do now. Mm -hmm. um, so it is something that customers can choose if they want to. And you said, so you, you're kind of researching behind closed doors until you're fully confident oh, and actually yeah. presenting it. Okay, yeah, fine. Uh, Darren, is that, that yeah. descriptive English style that you recognize as well? Yeah, I mean, um, if someone wants a Neapolitan Italian shirt, mm. they'll go to Luca. Mm. They won't, well, it's true, because they won't come into us you know, they don't, there's this emphasis on hand stitching and the hand finishing and putting this in by hand. In my opinion, it's tradition and history that, you know, lead to that. Luca's got a tradition in that, and that's what he does. Yeah. People don't come into Bud mm. and say, can you give me a, you know, a hand finish shirt like they do in Italy? <coughs> we don't get that. So that's fine. Because um, you have that tradition, they know what to expect, yeah, they exactly, not ask yeah, for anything yeah, else. Exactly that's just so, have that luxury when it kind of wants everything from yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think as Justin said as well, you can you you come in and I want this shirt, can you copy this colour? And you kind of go, look, we can copy the style of the colour, yeah. but you know, the construction, the lining, everything yeah. else, it probably isn't going to be 100% yeah. like yeah. these guys would do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we can't give you that. Mm. But people are, uh, you know, it's, I think, 
with the websites and the blogs now, I think people are, you know, happy to. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, yeah. I, think, I think people are quite happy to, to have different shirts from different people. Okay. I mean, it was one yeah. of those. Right. So rather than asking one to make you know yeah. to try and make everything, you go, okay, yeah. I'll have two or three and, yeah. Well, I think we were talking earlier, it was a case of, you know, shirt customers were always kind of very loyal. Mm. You know, they kind of went to you and that was it. Um, but, you know, I've got a customer who goes to Luca, mm. who also comes to me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's fine, I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, you know, he uses your shirts for something different, he uses my shirts <coughs> yes, for something yeah, different yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. It, it's, it's great that they can do that as well. Um, yeah. But, you know, to say, you know, do Neapolitan sort of, you know, mm. oversell the hand stitching, I don't think so. It's, it's what they do, it's their tradition. Yeah. You know, I, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at, Looking at Luca's stuff out there, it, it's fabulous. I do find it quite, it's, I always find it very striking that difference between the English and that kind of Neapolitan, because there's no, as far as I'm aware, in shoemaking or tailoring at long time, there's no equivalent to such a stark difference in that an English shirt is still is such an amazing quality, but it's none of it's made by hand, it's sewn by hand yeah. in that way. Mm -hmm. And yet the high end quality ones, pretty much everything will be. Yeah. You know, in shirt in anything else that doesn't really have that kind of vast difference. But I think it's what they expect when they when they when they go mm -hmm. there. And I mean um, yeah, it's distinct <coughs> to the Neapolitan style. I mean. And Jack, what do you find? Do people do you have a house style that people really recognise and ask for, or are you kind of expected to make everything? Well, we do is it's all bespoke. Mm -hmm. Somebody walks in, we're taking a measurement. Pretty much that shirt, it's gonna. We're, we're making a pattern on the mm -hmm. customer's posture, and he comes into second fitting. We make sure the slowness mm -hmm. on each side. Some guys they will have forward shoulder some low. I mean, we do that fitting, and then it's, it's all about the bespoke, it's all about the tailoring, how it fits, how it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. We got guys, their shoulders forward. Mm -hmm. We got guys right and left, we make the right panel smaller, the left panel bigger. Uh, and then, and then take it to, uh, when it gets, to, when, it, when we measure them up, we ask, how do you want the shirt to fit? Mm. I mean, you know, they go, comfortable. I say, comfortable, okay. I mean, am I aware of what it comes to? Exactly. And then what we do is, if we go by, let's say, we take an actual measurement on the chest. If the guy wants it comfortable, we add a six inches on his chest. Six inches? Six inches. That's inch and a half on each side. Yeah. That's comfortable. Okay. Now, when it gets to the stomach, that's about five and a half or five. If he has a little tummy, then you keep it straight. Or if he doesn't, then so you what, if that's that's five and a half beyond the, the measurement you've taken, right? So yeah, if it's not comfortable, if it's standard, what would the difference be? What do you add on? If it's a standard, it's a six, five and a half, <coughs> five and a half. Okay. When they go in, they want to fit it, mm -hmm. and then we go do five. Four and a half, four and a half. So you want to start comfortable and then kind of bring exactly. it back. So you know you just want to your customer exactly. that's what they want. Okay. Yeah. And then if they really want to fit it, then you're doing four inches mm -hmm. and three and a half and three and a half depends on how they and then it's, it's all about the shoulders too, to yeah. the way you take it, the way it slopes down from bone to bone. Mm -hmm. If it's a, you know, if they want it used to be in the nineties and you know, I had a guy he goes, Jack. His shirts are big. What happened? I'm looking at the date. It's 1992. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the way they were comfortable. I mean, the shoulders yeah, yeah. will a little drop. No, yeah. It's yeah. yeah, now it's changed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we take all this constriction plus in the, in the neck mm -hmm. from his actual. Let's say the guy goes, no, 15 and a half. I mean, 15 and a half. A store bought shirt is different than 15 and a half. I'm going to make it. And we do, I mean, it depends on, of course, we'll go into the fusing or not fusing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are all considered, you know, we take consideration of making it three quarter bigger than their actual. Yeah. So in a wash, you lose about a quarter to three eighths. And you're about three eighths of an inch, you know, room you have. Yeah. Um, maybe go just to kind of fully cover that style point, um, how I'm interested, how would you define a North Italian? style of a shirt, because it, 
it fits somewhere between the history of the English and the Neapolitan, would you say? Yeah, it's a different style, it's a bit clean mm. and uh, very narrow, humble, to move better, and the floating, floating color. Mm. And we do also the double lining in the front, it's our specialty. Because when you use a nice albini cotton, <laughs> very light, <laughs> you can see too. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah. It's interesting. I always find that the like that, that North Italian uh, tradition is always it's always very light, very soft, very comfortable, but it's on it's a clean line. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the time in the bottom shirt is not clean. There's stuff going on everywhere. It's, you know, it may be lovely, but it's definitely clean is not the word you would use. So. As in, I thought yeah, good we don't, we don't like the yeah. wrinkles yeah. <laughs> everywhere. It's not clear. <laughs> yeah, it's, and I don't know if anyone's had um, had much of a chance to see the different samples we've got outside on the mannequins, but um, we, um, I kind of, I was interested to see what the different shirt makers would take the idea of doing kind of smart casual as a shirt, um, using that as a theme or something that you could wear in the office, but also could wear more casually in a casual office or in a you know, in a bar or something and got through different types. So they've all picked different, slightly more casual cloths and different styles. But interestingly, each one has some little sort of technical change as well, or kind of interesting technique, which I find really nice. So like Paolo was saying that I think his shirt, I know, which is the white shirt, has a double layer of cloth and a kind of V across the chest here. Yeah. Um, the idea being that it's so thin that otherwise you'd see through, but on the chest it's kind of covered up twice. Even the, the collar, the, the lining, the collar, under the wing is uh, rough, so do not move the tie. Yeah, and so at the very with the back there, isn't yeah. it? The back is a panel, yeah. which because you have the lining exposed, it's got some texture and it holds yes. the tie in place. And the collar is made in the reverse, so we have a nice uh, finishing. Mm. Yeah. Do you find that, that that kind of big V, do people wear it even without a jacket these days? So they just have sort of this almost Superman <laughs> chest? Normally it's with the jacket. Oh. Okay. Um, I think, um, given that we're just talking about kind of shirt materials, I'd be interested to know, it's a fairly open question, but what kind of shirts and materials do you like the most? Not brand, but which, uh, uh, you'd like to work with very fine ones because you can make something very kind of clean, or actually like kind of casual ones, or is, have a favorite to get in? I think it's all the, the finer grade the arms. Mm. I think they just, they, they just drape, hang a lot nicer, you know. 90% of the time people are coming in for kind of shirts for work, a bit more formal. Okay. Um, and yeah, that sort of thing. The high grade yarns, 140s, 170s. Um, yeah, they, they, they're lovely to work with. They, they, they lay quite nicely. And the people enjoy wearing it as well. Yeah. You sort of tell someone that this is like the Rolls Royce of cotton, you know, it's not cheap. <laughs> they go, oh, how much is it going to be? Yeah, so you tell them. But once they have it, once they've stood up again, well, yeah, 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 yeah. But once they have it, they go. It's very difficult to come back. It's so comfortable to wear. Yeah. So. And do they? Do you have to sort of explain that maybe it needs a little bit more care and attention than yeah. just a regular kind of Oxford or something? Yeah, absolutely. And you can't just you know, chuck it to the dry cleaners, you know, because yeah. it, it just won't last. But, you know, um, people are a bit more. We educate, but people are a little bit more educated on how to launder the shirts. Um, yeah. I'm telling your grandmother how to suck every room, you know what I mean, how to wash your clothes, but it, it, it does work. Anyway. But, yeah, yeah. I think it's, um, people are coming in and spending a lot of money on shirts, they want to look after them, so. Yeah. And Jack, do you, find, do you find maintenance is an issue in the States? Because I think a lot, I mean, far more people in the States have their shirts dry cleaned all the time, and I think maybe certainly don't kind of press them themselves at all. Well, yeah, we don't have as long as out there. We have some, and, uh, and, um, Some of our customers that come in, they always want the best, the best, and they you don't know, start from the 140s to 170s, 200s, 240s, mm -hmm. three and now there's 340s, and they want that, but it's just that, you know, it's going to wear out. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's going to wrinkle a little easier, it's going to wear out a little faster, you can put them through. The, but the best is the item, I like the twills, the Hamptons, the 140s. Mm -hmm. it's, you want something that's kind of yeah, it's it's all day long. Classic, I wear that wear even well. if you go out at night. Still, that yeah. that twill, the hemp and twill is nice. Mm. It has that fresh look to it. And, uh, it's very. I often find, particularly with, with readers or people who comment to me, that they 
it's interesting when you say what makes a quality suit or a quality shirt or something. I think particularly with shirts, they expect a quality shirt to last well, but at the same time, often the ones that are more expensive or the less quality actually don't last as well. But it, for some reason, for the shirts, more than other things, they expect the quality shirt to last really well, which is just not the case with those kinds of things. Exactly. I mean, even the one, I think 120s will last longer, even 100s will last longer in the wash that we've seen it. I mean, we have a laundry service that it sometimes I go back and, 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 and I see some of the shirts they're still in the 1990s, guys still wearing it. Yeah. I mean, uh, the body's still okay, and, uh, but the, you know, the collar you'll... Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, Luca, what's your favorite cloth? I like tweeds, I like uh, oxfords, I like poplin, so... You have no favorite, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, uh, of course, the, the working with um, uh, like non London clients or US clients, mm. um, I, I learned from them that um, uh, you know, more structured fabric, like 102, sometimes is better than uh, 140. Mm. So, uh, for, particular, that for US versus UK, or just particular no, clients? No, working with uh, this with kind of clients, yeah. Okay. Comparing to the Italian request, ah, which see. is more like a very high um, yeah, count yard, very, very fast. They just want the best regardless. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, I think uh, a good 102, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very good and it's, it's soft mm -hmm. and it uh, doesn't crease too much, so you can stay uh, you know, the whole day uh, where you don't, you know, don't mm -hmm. look like uh, yeah. too like messy. Like a bag of, I mean, like a bag of crisps, I yeah. think. Yeah. So it's, uh, this is also important. Yeah. Uh, how was your favorite? Poplin. Uh, poplin? Yes. I, I like that. Good, good quick answer. I like poplin. Why do you like poplin so much? Because it's like it's better than silk sometimes. So you like the very high grade yeah. counts as well, though? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm 40, like him. I like it. Because it's structure, it's more, instead of too, too, too thin, mm -hmm. I like more structure for the fabrics. Well, um, as you're actually just talking about uh, that, it reminds me that earlier we were talking about the different um, the scales of the business and bespoke and, and how that's difficult to. I think I deliberately selected speakers who had different backgrounds and also the scales of the business were, di were different, but I didn't realize how much the scale of the bespoke was different across different places as well. You know, so someone like Darren, for example, people have that great experience you're upstairs, you're cutting, you have that kind of personal relationship. But like Justin, you were saying, you have somebody in every one of the, how many shops do you have? Six? We have um, four in Hong Kong, two in the well, States, and uh, a few in China. So and you have bespoke orders from all of those? Yes. Yes. Wow. Um, and it's uh, very lucky. Uh, many of those stores are manned by the uh, apprentices of my grandfather. Okay. So they kind of learned the trade under my grandfather, mm -hmm. um, and then they went on to kind of have their own business almost. So they were one team originally, and they just kind of split out right, different exactly. groups. Um, okay, well, and, and then some of them, um, you know, the, some might have had started off in a store and then had experiences in the factory. Some started off in the factory and then came out to the store, mm -hmm. and it, it was kind of almost a trial by fire at, at that point. Where in Hong Kong in the 1960s and 70s, you know, the American customers were coming in, like twelve of this, twelve of this, twelve of this, twelve of this. So it's like you're doing that now, three hundred shirts a day. One shirt today, back then. So it's you know it, it was almost like a, uh, it was for many of my um, my elders. It was a it was a trial by fire almost. Like, yeah. You know? And then they kind of went on and had their own clients, and we were able to expand in that way. So you have all those all those um, shops are now run by those apprentices, right. but they must be getting fairly old now as well, right? They are. So um, okay. they they have their younger guys on their team, um, but. Then you know we also have to make sure that we're, we're providing additional training on top of that. Um, well, so they come into Hong Kong into Central Place to get training, or is it just all on site? Um, so mostly on site. Okay. Mostly on site, but we try to send out as much information as we can. Because yeah. we were talking in the, in the, which I found really interesting, in the last symposium with, um, we were talking with retailers and talking different types of independent retailer, and people were talking about how difficult it is to expand into a new store when the store is so much you and your personality mm -hmm. and then hiring or finding someone who's going to basically look after that and represent you is very tough and it's something you're going to have that challenge as well. I think that uh, something that helps us along the way in that respect was having kind of a system of communication that everyone understood. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, placing the order in New York and 
writing down the notes in a certain way, and I guess for us, it's there, there's all sorts of stuff in Chinese, and even if um, you know, I showed some of my Chinese friends that aren't in the industry, they might not know what we're talking about. It's kind of like this kind of internal language, internal language which everyone from the store to the to the factory, uh, to, to people that are following up on orders, all kind of understand. Yeah. And then it's one big teamwork to, to get it done. Wow. Um, and, uh, and we've been lucky enough to have that. So. Makes you, yeah, okay. That's, that sounds like quite a, yeah, quite, a, quite a discipline to have to be <laughs> that good on all the kind of good things all the time. Um, and also, um, Jack, we were talking earlier about, I didn't realize the scale of some of the bespoke things you do, particularly for the movie industry. Oh. From that. That's great. Trying to ensure consistency when you're ordering, like making sixty at a time for some people. Who fail. Well, it all depends on the, uh, on the movie. What kind of a script is it? Is it in action? Mm -hmm. We just recently did. Uh, we're still making. I think we're still shipping it to London. Mission Impossible is getting down there to, with the Tom Cruise's, you know, action scenes that it's ten of like twelve like. You know, that there's. 10, 12 different changes, and you know, wow, that, that's what, you know, I mean, movies like this, I like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but where they don't have to do any, you know, and it mostly is, um, uh, it's triples or doubles or triples. Yeah, yeah. And they're standing still. And, and that's not for a stunt matter, I think, that's just because no, you just wear it through always, the yeah, stunt gets his own size, you know, make sure he, Sometimes it depends on the budget also. <laughs> <laughs> it must be quite a hard, is that a hard business to manage? Because it must be very bumpy, you suddenly have these massive orders and then it kind of quiet. Yeah, them. but as Justin said, I mean, we have our privates that, uh, as you, you know, they walk in and they have their orders, but pretty much the entertainment, you know, I mean, the entertainment they want yesterday. <laughs> Figure it out. And, I mean, we get calls like day before, yeah, and we get it out next day, even the same day, in the morning time, and then it gets in FedEx and shit. Yeah, I mean, I guess these these are all people who have a pattern. They're patterns, well, yeah. As the you're just I making mean, from yeah, that pattern. Yeah, it's all so, again. It's all. It's not just cranking out. You just you know we pre-wash the fabric. We make sure there's no sh no shrinkage. It goes from the sixteenth of an inch, mm -hmm. even in every single aspect from the the drop of the shoulder, the sleeve lengths, and. Uh, you know, to A2Z, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they count on us and, uh, and it gets delivered. But well, it's, it's interesting, I yeah, to bespoke feels so like a small world would be very consistent, but actually there's such massive differences in this. I mean, like, Darren, I'm not sure how you cope if you had to deliver 60 bespoke shirts by the end of the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be tough. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal, but I mean, that's Jack's niche, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, kind of used yeah, to doing it, but, you know. Um, Repeat customers, so. But it's very, I mean, it's very, I think a lot of people would think that that kind of part of the spoken, I'm sure the appeal for you is it's a lot of that personal relationship, right? You know, the guy comes in, you have a chat, you have a cup of tea, you know, you talk about the next order and, you know, and yeah. you deliver it, you know, a few weeks or months later, you're yeah. the next day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, um, I think I expect that with the London shirt like this as well. It's, it's going to take a little while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, maybe quite a, I guess on the kind of that spoke, being quite a practical question. Like, um, what do you think? Maybe Luca first. What's what's the biggest mistake that you think guys make when they're ordering shirts or doing spoke for the first time? I don't know. Maybe you know some people they they ask for some uh, I don't know short sleeve. You don't like short sleeves? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The thing is that they, they think that it's, it's right, but they they don't understand that. Um, the sleeve when it's unbuttoned mm. has to be a little bit more. Oh, this is not a short sleeve shirt, but a no, shorter. No, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. they they want it too it short. doesn't work. So ah, they, okay. they say, no, please make the short, the, the, the sleeve shorter, then shorter, then shorter, and then <laughs> becomes too short. So what's and very because they're not wearing the jacket, they didn't realize no, they just they wanted you, to. When, when you unbutton the shirt with the cuff, it has to be like here, mm -hmm. not like here. So they're unbuttoning it and going, that's too long. Yes. Think, and not thinking about the excess you need to move. Yes, the arm correct. So yes. Right. That's very okay. common, not the for. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, how about, do you have one piece of advice? What do you think mistakes people make? Sometimes they choose some style of the color that's not very well for the figure. 
Like, you mean not flattering their face or just being yeah. a bit too extravagant? Uh, maybe it, uh, because we try to make the, the nice color for the face, mm -hmm. the proportion. And so, so they would want it, they are more driven by fashion. Uh, maybe them. no color, they want a big neck, uh, a big, <laughs> big color like <laughs> this, <laughs> two inch, and uh, no color. Sorry. <laughs> it's quite difficult to tell them. <laughs> Or maybe you can just make, make them one and then show them the mirror why it looks terrible and then the next one will be okay. <laughs> uh, Justin, what, uh, what do you get a lot of? Too tight, number one. Mm -hmm. Customers want it tight, tight, tight. I think when Jack was saying four, I think we put customers that went from four to two to like one. And then we were like, well, if you sit down, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. And then we make it and they're like, oh, I'm just pulling. <laughs> Um, do you think people don't realize like they almost sometimes I think guys fit it almost like a jacket and they want like, they want their jacket tight. The yeah. shirt is tight as well. But sure. The cotton doesn't have the natural doesn't have the natural pull, pull and, and you can't unbutton it when you exactly. sit down. Well, you shouldn't unbutton it. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know, but yeah. Um, so two tights, one. Another one, I think now, especially with the suits having you know such different kind of expressions of the shoulder. Mm. If you have a softer Neapolitan shoulder, natural shoulder, you probably don't want a collar that's too stiff because mm. it's not going to kind of go well. with that outfit. <laughs> and conversely, you know, if you have something a bit more structured, then you probably want something structured in the, okay. in the collar as well. So when, when customers might choose something that maybe they're not considering the whole outfit, then mm. you have to give some bit of advice there. It's almost like the more the more different customers you deal with, the more styles you make, the more you have to become a stylist as well as a maker, yeah, right? Yeah. Because before you had the same consistent product and that was kind of fine, but now, now like you say, people want stuff, a yeah. massive, big, tall, stiff yeah. collar with their yeah. bottom jacket. Right. right. Yeah. Um, Jack, uh, earlier you said you mentioned fused versus floating collars, which, uh, apart from maybe, say, Neapolitan styles, it's probably one thing which can a lot of people kind of vary with. Do you do you make both? Do you have a view? We make both. Yeah. I mean, uh, we made, I mean, back in the eighties, nineties, there was all non-fused collars, and then mid nineties, uh, uh, a lot of brand names. They're doing fused. They see it. And that's what they want. That's the look they want. Uh, what we do is to make sure we make one up first. Okay. I go wash it two times and come back to me. And see We're not there. there. I mean, I, I just don't, I won't make it. And he goes and washes, comes back. And you see sometimes an effused collar, it goes down almost three quarter range mm. from three eighths to three quarter. Mm. But you got to press that collar right and we explain them. <coughs> make sure the back of the, the, back of the collar, if you see, get or done, mm. that means that the fabric's sitting there. Mm. They need to hand press the collars and cuff, they go, it's expensive. I go, listen, the body doesn't have to be hand pressed, but the collars and cuff, mm. just pay them a dollar or two dollar more, make sure they hand press it, it's nice and smooth. Mm. If they do that, that's about three eighths of an inch shrinkage, that's about it, mm. and the fuse, yeah. So it depends on the, depends on the <laughs> length of the fuse they put in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the, the one layer that you, get, you, you guys do it, it's perfect, one layer, with a little cloth in the back of it, not the stiff one. Yeah. You can, you know, that will go down about a quarter, and that's about it. But, so but the, the thicker and the Exactly. Then like when you have it, the one layer fuse, and then they put another medium fuse. You have a 220 gram fuse, and then they put another 150 gram fuse in the back of it. And guess what? You know, in the heat, that's going to go down. Yeah. And, and you're asking people to go out and wash it because wash you it, and then they come back. And you want to see because whether they're comfortable then with it. Well, yeah. when they come back, and when they say, "Oh, I mean, it's a little tight now. Let's add another quarter. Oh, but it's okay. too loose. And let's <coughs> let's take out the quarter. Oh, okay. And that's where Fine. they're comfortable with. You know that that collar is going to shrink down to there. Mm. But the non fuse, which I like, uh, I'm wearing a fuse collar, but you know, <laughs> the, the non fuse that I like is mm. nice and comfortable. Uh, that will go down only a quarter. Even if you really press it out, we pre wash that non fused collar and cuff to you. I mean, it's really going. But it's, <laughs> it's still going to change anyway. Yeah, it'll go down, depends on the pressing. Too. Yeah. I mean, you, but, and you, but you wear both styles and you like both styles. Both styles. You both I, my casual, relaxed look is a non fused collar. Ah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Nice and so, yeah. Yeah. at the 150 gram. It just 
Yeah. It feels a bit softer than yeah. 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 I mean, you could go down to 100, 110. It's like a tissue, but I mean, not a tissue. It's like a double clot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the fabric is about one thing. Mm. You know, you just trip it. Mm. But uh, yeah. how would you? You make you make both. Do you which which do you prefer? Both, but I prefer the unfused color. Unfused. Yes. Why? Well, it's more softer and um, more an identity. Yeah. Really different. I don't like to be the minority here. I don't like to stiff too too much uh, strong. Yeah. yeah. It's more tailor. I prefer. <laughs> Luca, you make just fused pretty much. Uh, yes. And, but Darren makes you make pretty much just unfused, or you make I'm, something. I mean, I, I have done you know fused colours. Yeah. Um, but again, people come in and they, they kind of want that London shirt, like a bud style with yeah. flying cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they want a crisper colour, mm. still do the same process, but we put that extra bit of fusing on the line so it makes it look a little bit crisper, a little bit sharp. Mm. Um, okay. So yeah. yeah. And is, is again like is maintenance an issue at all, and that they have to the, the yeah. floating have to work a little bit more closely? Exactly what Jack said. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you can certainly in the US as well with, with the customers there, and the shirts come back. And say, I've got this kind of knife pleat down yeah, the front yeah. of the collar here, and you say exactly what Jack said. You, you need to press away from the points. You have that fullness in the back, mm. but when you put the collar on, button it up. All that fullness is taken up in there. Mm. So you know, it's um, just. Actually, this reminds me of looking at the um, your, if I'm correct, the sample shirt you have outside is a raglan sleeved shirt. Yes, yeah. That must be a pain to line. How do you wear oh, it? Like is, I, was, I was doing this one. I was wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I completely ignored your brief, and I just <laughs> done something completely different. <laughs> it's amazing. I've never seen a raglan sleeved shirt. Yeah. Before, yeah. I, well, I, 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 say, I just, I, I wanted, or we wanted to try something different. Yeah. yeah. So, um, a bit of a kind of crossover thing, I think it's worked. And I mean, I'm wearing the one with the, the facings and the, the one piece collar, yeah. but it also worked. Christopher's wearing the same shirt but with a butt collar on it, so you, you can get the kind of crossover yeah. with it. But yeah, just wanted to try something different. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Justin, what's your free stuff like this? We, so we're the same boat as Jack, so we, we do both, um, and completely what Jack said. Some of those American dry cleaners, just those collars, just and they put so much starch on it. And even if you say no starch, they just starch up the collar and it just goes, goes, goes. Mm. Um, but for me, um, I'm actually wearing a fuse today, just because I'm experimenting with this tab collar. Okay. But I generally go on fuse just because it has that natural look. And uh, we iron the shirts at home, so then we can do what yeah. Darren said and, and push the uh, iron it away from the points. Yeah. Uh, but fused, if you kind of want that crisp look, um, and uh, and it is, it is. If you're ironing yourself, it is easier to iron. Mm. So. Cool. Okay. Well, I think that's maybe a very technical round of questions. But, uh, okay. So, and also, just just to finish off the discussion of the different styles outside, um, Jack, I was interested that in your choice, the how many you call it? What do you call the collar? Hey, the key. Okay, so, so yours is a striped shirt and the body and the sleeve, but you have a white collar but not the band. Yes. So, from a, so I guess this is more interesting, less from a technical point of view, more from a style point of view. That's your idea of a proper more casual shirt, or a tailored shirt anyway. A tailored yeah. yeah. tailor shirt. Uh, pretty much when I'm at the shop helping clients, uh, I, do, I do wear uh, the French cap. But the cape, which is the top part, I keep it white. Mm -hmm. And the band itself is the body of the shirt, the whole thing. The cape itself, if you have the perfect collar, and especially with the spread and the fifth of fuse collar, it gives a different signature, it gives a statement. It's, instead of wearing a uh, tie that will yeah. identify you as a, you know, you're, you're looking at the collar, that's the. It gives you a focus the, point. It's the, the frame of your, uh, mm -hmm. the frame of your facial. Um, now, with that, you could go down and dinner at night or wear with, I have a lot of clients, they wear the jeans, French cuff, cigar, mm -hmm. white cuff. Mm -hmm. No, not white cuff, white cape, and that's the way. The other one that we do a lot is the button down, which, again, uh, it keeps it uh, 
not the vertical hit them button down, it's a pocket that you have to button it before wearing it. And kind of, you bring that first button about two and a quarter inch down, mm. that gives that. Just opens up, up, opens up perfectly. Yeah. Just so the button down stops it collapsing yeah. in the jacket as well. Yeah. And guys that they go, you know, this is too soft to stuff, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. We put a little inner line on in six inches here. Oh, so really? both sides. Oh, and just keeps it up. Very crisp and clear. Yeah. 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 Great on the night. It's a TV show that we do it. You get to like that. And yeah. Yeah. Dwayne Jackson, the wall. Yeah. Or shit. Same thing. <laughs> we put that six inch little inner facing. It's a fuse and then we put it, it keeps it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was all fascinating. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technical I, I, was, I think I was very, I was very impressed that, particularly coming from LA, that your casual shirt was actually very, still a very smart yeah. shirt. And I think of LA as being a very, very casual place, yeah, but it's, it's still it's, very smart. Yeah, I mean they don't dress up as much there. It's, it's, it's the French cuff that gives a different signature. The right mm. color. So it's almost that's yeah. giving them a way to dress up because they're not going to wear a tie, but it's going to wear a very nice smart shirt that goes. Which, you know, the one piece collar that uh, we do a lot, which Eric has it out there, uh, it's uh, in its 70s, 80s, and even 90s, we did that a lot. In fact, the last one that it was on the screen, it was Michael Douglas when he did that money, never sleeps. And it was funny that his dad, Crook, used to get that collar, which we call Mr. B or Italian collar, it's a one piece collar. Mm -hmm. And we didn't tell him that it's your dad's style. He loved <laughs> it. He loved it. And then and then we told him oh, afterwards that this is your dad's style. It was of course it wasn't a movie. But that's 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 another one that we do a lot. Yeah. With the button down. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, that's a nice one. Cool. I I'm, I want I'm conscious I want to allow some time for questions at the end, so maybe just kind of one more question, maybe starting with you. I'll, I'll always want to kind of to conclude with something about the future. Um, particularly bespoke, are you optimistic about bespoke shirts and high level shirts? Yes. Why, what makes you optimistic about it, do you think? Uh, because I see that uh, there are a lot of people that uh, like to have a tailor shirt, and uh, the, the world has uh, a lot of people you're seeing the demand, and that's got to keep yeah. you a lot of optimism. Luca, what do you think? You find really, what makes you optimistic or excited about it? It has to grow. After <laughs> we need to <laughs> work for good, the next so that's fine. 10 years, and then we, we will be retired. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 10 years, <laughs> like this I like that. <laughs> and then, uh, so I, I, think, I think it's going to, to grow. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, of the, thanks to the um, internet, Thanks to you know the, also this uh, digital uh, stuff that Albin is making mm -hmm. that uh, you know uh, it's it's easy for a young guy for 20 years uh, guy to, to understand to, to understand to, mm -hmm. to choose the fabric mm -hmm. uh, easily and then, uh, so it's uh, this definitely helps to make this uh, work going forward. Going forward yeah. cool. Justin. Hopefully, I can retire in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I, 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 I think definitely. Um, I think, I think bespoke in general is almost kind of like a. You speak to some of the enthusiasts; it's almost kind of like a drug where mm. you start and then you start seeing things, and you're like, "Oh, it's a quarter inch here, quarter inch there. How come my right low is enough?" And and there's all these small adjustments that you can kind of keep going. It's like going down a rabbit hole. Yeah. And, um, so once again, the rabbit hole, you're optimistic because they're not going to be out again. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as um, you know, there's good promotion for, for bespoke um, you know, blogs such as yourself that really kind of champion bespoke, then I'm not optimistic for sure. Cool. Darren? I, I think the same. I think I touched on it earlier. I think you know, the advent of the websites and blogs and all that is great for the business. Um, it is growing. I can see it growing more. Certainly back in London, there's some youngsters coming in. Yeah. To try it. Well, in 30 um, years, I mean, this is your 30th year, that's been a long, it must be yeah. a big change. I mean, they can't be that young when you were in the was 30 years yeah. ago, right? I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, 
you know, 10, 15 years ago, everyone wanted to be a tailor. And now, you know, people go, yeah, I, I want to be a shirt maker. Which is, which is refreshing, you know. Yeah. Hopefully it continues and more young people come into it as well. Um, it's, it's, it's a small trade, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, we, we've got a young guy with us, um, James. So, oh, yeah. you know, but it's good. But yeah, I think we just need a few more young people coming in. Um, Do you get to, there, was, there was a point where, like, the Savro takes yeah. so many people wanted to be apprentices and yeah. wanted to come and learn, yeah. and that's happening with shirts now? Uh, I, think, I, I, th I think so. I think, you know, to say there's a few people you know, learning, doing their own thing as well, which, which is great, you know, and it's, it spreads the world of bespoke shirts as well, and, you know, we're not, we're not going to lose those skills, yeah. you know, because if people don't come into the trade, those skills are gone, you yeah. know, yeah. so, you know, yeah, I, I think it's really refreshing. Yeah, but the, the only problem you say, just is I think some people come in for a few years and then leave and do their own business after that. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, with Instagram, it's also quite easy to, to, to build a customer base in that mm -hmm. way, but I was also talking to to Darren, and I think luckily, maybe in the shirt trade, mm -hmm. you know, staff are a bit more loyal as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, at least hopefully for us, it's been a family feel in the in the company. So mm -hmm. we've, we've we've done okay mm -hmm. in that respect. Cool. Wow, nice positive note. I like it. Um, all right, questions from the audience. Who's got a question for us? Yeah, we don't think we have a mic, but please, it's um, small, and I'm sure we'll hear you. I have a question for the whole panel, and, and each one can just say. Whatever, but do you find more people come to you for an experience or because they have an odd body shape and they need a good shirt made? Okay, so the question, I'll just repeat the question very quickly. The question was, do people come to you as a bespoke shirt maker mostly because they have an odd body shape, so it's a fit issue, or because they want something personalized and it's more of a style thing? I think partly it's a good entry level for bespoke, you know. <laughs> minimum order of sort of four shirts in a thousand pounds. So it's a good way to kind of test it as well. Um, are they are they coming they coming the young their kind of customers coming for a style thing because they want to yeah, I, I think it's you know a, a bit of both really. I think there's, there's people who love bespoke and just want that experience. Yeah. Um, but there are people who need bespoke because they can't get what they want off the rack. Mm. So it, it's 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 a bit of both but I mean to answer the question, I mean, I think it's more now people want that bespoke experience, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, maybe, so, would you find, would find the same, just a mix of both? Yeah. Is it, does it, does the panel say it's rarely just one or the other, that often people are aware that it's, I mean, so it, is it that just some customers just want fit and some want style, or actually most customers want a mix of both? What do you find, Jack? I think <clears throat> uh, they want to come in because they have gone throughout different shirt makers. Mm. They want to come in to learn exactly if, if what they have got or what they're getting is the right it's one been, yeah. to try out. It's walk-in, is we're having more walk-in than uh, mm. Just trying out different try shirt makers yeah. and things, okay. Yeah. They, they have to feel comfortable about it. Cool. Um, Luca, you find the yeah, same I can thing? Say, yeah, I think it's a passion. So the client that uh, wants to try this experience, uh, so picking the fabric, choosing the color, details, uh, chatting with uh, the artisan, that's I think the, the, the nicest part of the... Mm. So... The creative process yeah, is the yeah, nicest. That's very, very nice. And so I think for us, um, our older customers have come in for, to, to go for, to look for the fit. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe they have an odd body shape, or uh, and, and they're looking for something that fits them. And I think the younger customers now are looking for that experience. Mm. So I think that's what we're seeing, at least in our business. Okay. Question? Yes, Dominic. Um, I'm interested to hear everyone's as short as possible view on color styles, proportion of the style, shapes that you lean towards in different styles. So from a small, like, which they think is flattering to different face? Yeah, or? you've got three cutaways there, very close there. Mm. Do, you, do you have a go-to? Do you really take the shoulders, face? What do you do? Mm. What are your go-to philosophies? So Paolo, for example, you're wearing a, you, you wear a lot of spread collars? Always. Always? <laughs> because you think it's flattering or just because you like the style? I like the style. Yeah. I think it goes with my face. <laughs> it's good for me. <laughs> And why do you think it goes with your face? Because you want something that's... I don't like the point. Uh, it's for me, it's the whole style for me. 
So it's, it's a uh, modern versus a traditional thing, even yes. though it's more modern. Yes. Okay. And Jack, what do you wear? I've been wearing this collar style for the longest time. I usually wear it without a tie, how I said, with the white cape on it. Um, I would say if you have a pointier collar, it depends on the it depends on the construction of the collar, the, the way it's been cut. If it's if you're getting a pointier collar and you have a bend that it kind of curves up to a stand, and then those tips are not laying down on your chest, that's a no-no. I mean, the spreadness, the semi even semi spread. When you leave it open, it just kind of relaxes on your chest. It get, you know, it's a better look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I recommend each client's the uh, different uh, color. So, if you like uh, uh, pointed, we can. Uh, normally, when it's pointed, I always suggest to have some tie gap. Mm -hmm. In order to have the so the tie's got room inside yeah, there. So yeah, really the room is not like uh, too constructed. So <laughs> when you're not, and so you're not really leading anyone anywhere, you just say which of the, you just ask which no, no, style. No, of course, of course so I, I recommend to to go with the, maybe three choices. I don't want to to give them too much choices, otherwise they get confused. So mm. like uh, spread, semi spread, and uh, uh, pointed. Mm. So better to to have less. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Particularly for a, particularly for a new uh, customer as well. Yeah. Three, four choices. Yeah. Justin, do you, you tend to do something similar? Kind of yeah, I think it, it also depends on the, the proportion of the head, the size of the head, as uh, in relation to the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And um, we always try to tell customers if you're a bigger head, you probably want a collar that can kind of balance that out and, and be a bit bigger, bigger as well, but longer in the points. Yeah. Whereas if you have a slightly smaller head, maybe you can go with a smaller collar. Mm. And then also, um, also the facial shape thing. So if you have a kind of longer face, then maybe a wider collar to balance that out. A wider collar. A wider collar. So, so the so, like so, the, so, the, so the length and height actually want the opposite right. in the collar. Right. So actually, this might be not be a good. So I have a long face. <laughs> I decided to experiment with this. I'm, I'm breaking my own rules here, but uh, ah, so um, to be and, uh, and so this is kind of like a pointed. But well, that's interesting. So on the on the size of the head, you're saying it should be harmonious. It should be the same, yeah, roughly. Yeah. But on the height of the head, it should be the opposite. Um, yeah, as it were. Say that. Okay. Dan, I think pretty much what everyone said. Really, I mean, um, I think what Paolo said as well. If, if someone has a rounder face, you, you don't want to give them a severe cut away because it will only accentuate it's a wider face. Um, we have lots of different colours. Of bud, but we kind of sort of gravitate between about two or three different styles, which we show people when we're in the fitting and we have them up against them around the neck. But we always adapt it a little bit. Um, you know, the semi spread style is probably the one that most people lean to because it sits under the lapels of the jacket with a tie on. Um, where we are in London as well, there's a lot of hedge fund guys around, and they are no tie jacket. You know, but they want that collar to sit up, right up, yeah. falling down. Almost too big. Well, to do. That's exactly what you had to do. I yeah. mean, painstakingly, I kind of went through it with a couple of guys, tried it on myself, and I think we got it. And it when they've got their jacket on or a sweater on, it just sits up quite proud. So okay. they're all happy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, you know, you kind of guide people to what suits them mm -hmm. as well. But I think you said earlier as well, there's some people come in and they have a, I've seen that guy wearing that collar, I want that collar. Even if he's half the size. Any questions? Audi? Yeah, it's an observation for the question that it's surprising how many men are prepared to spend many thousands of pounds on a suit, but they never consider that a bad shirt can ruin the great suit. Mm. A bit of the colour and the way the body is can ruin the great sports jacket or something. And if someone the brain doesn't go straight to the a shirt that has the same quality and fit. But I also, we often encourage people because sometimes guys have very short legs and the collar and the chin and they walk when they try to run the rest of it. And it makes a huge difference to that neck being shown. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I wanted to ask is when you guys are creating a shirt, do you always, always assume that the collar is going to tie? Mm -hmm. Because the minute that the collar is off, the collar sits in a different way. And guys are going to tie to less. And you see them all the time with the jacket. Mm, okay, yes, yeah, so um, I don't know.
so Ollie's observation was that she finds that a lot of guys are prepared to spend a huge amount of money on their tailoring, but not so much on their shirts, and that often a cheap shirt can ruin a very good suit. And the question was, when a customer uh, is having a shirt made, do you, are you designing it specifically for a tie or without a tie, or are you trying to always kind of cope with both eventualities? Yeah? Um, Jack, would you? Well, it depends how is this posture. If it's forward and he has a low neck, you can't give him a straight collar that's going to sit up on him. You just got to make sure that the bend that it's cut, it goes down. It's about one in the front of the band. It should be about one inches, seven eighths, and one inches if it's really low neck. So when he unbuttons, the color still sits here. It doesn't fly up. But you would always make it for to of course try and do both things, tie it without tie. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I have guys that they they go. We're, I'm not going to use a I'm not going to use a tie with this shirt. And, and they want to see that neck to be smaller, so it sits up a little more, and it gives them, mm. I guess. So is there always a little bit of a compromise? Like if he, if he wasn't going to wear a tie ever, you would do it slightly differently? Definitely, yeah. 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 I mean, what I'm wearing right now, it's a higher band in the front, which is about one in, one in almost a quarter, which is still, but the way it's cut, yeah. it just it lays wide. When I leave it open, it stands tall. It doesn't work like this. And it's all about the comforts. I, I think, going back to the last question as well, I think um, I've kind of learned as well to, to ask people. It's not a dinner bomb, don't get excited. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've, I've learned to sort of ask people, how are you going to wear it? And that, that collar mm. has been devised so they can wear it with or without. Mm. Um, I change it at the front, you know, the make the bands a little bit deeper, yeah. keep the slope up a little bit. Mm. Um, yeah, exactly that, and that's what it does, it, it keeps it sort of up as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, one quick question, perhaps. Uh, last question. Oh, you would you really had a question. Sorry, we answered. Just for the gentleman from Hong Kong, what do you do when a customer comes in and he's in Hong Kong for 48 or 72 hours and he says, hi, can you make me a shirt? And you do. And then three weeks later, he's back in New York and he wants to order shirts and you tell him it's three to six weeks. Ah. Uh, it's um, it's you know in Hong Kong our our, uh, our production's in Hong Kong, so we're able to have that quick delivery. Uh, but in the U.S., um, because of just also to figure out the logistics of everything, uh, we do need three to six weeks to, to to get it over there. So unfortunately, it's that's the uh, pros and cons of um, you know, offering something, offering something really, really quick location. in one location where we're based and then and then uh, not being able to offer it that speedy service in another country. Um, so, mm. um, so yes, last question, sorry. Um, this is another question for Justin, actually. Uh, obviously, your well, family business started copying um, English shirts, probably Italian shirts, that they're more renowned these today, but you've grown into your own brand. Uh, so you, you mentioned earlier that there is a different point of sort of house style How do people feel about the label of being made in Hong Kong now? And I think that's something that I've struggled with myself coming to the, the company as a, as a young guy and, and hearing about different house styles, Italian house styles, British house styles, and what's the Hong Kong house style. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I can only say this for our company at the moment, and we've kind of built our business on, on, on service first. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we try, at least we try, and, um, and it's um, you know, doing what the customer wants, 
Um, and then, of course, then also there, there's the technical, technical aspects of uh, uh, having the shirt fit the way it's supposed to be with the collars, and, uh, the, the shoulders and the balance and all that. Uh, but in terms of a, a Hong Kong house style, to be honest, I, 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 don't, I don't really know. Right yeah, now. It's, it's, I mean, it kind of, it kind of feels a bit like, because you're already making Elder and styles, and actually everybody's talking, is getting influenced by other people's styles yeah. as well, you probably won't even ever have a very it's, it's always style, just kind of never again. It's always it's kind of, of always just, being mixed together and together. Yeah. together as well. Yeah. Um, and in, in terms of made in Hong Kong, then uh, um, I'm glad that you're saying that it's it's not perceived as a negative thing anymore because that I, I think we're one of the only one of the few that, that still make it in Hong Kong. Um, there's many that have moved to to China, and we're seeing that China's catching up in terms of the quality for sure. And there's good quality coming out of China, um, but. Um, we stay in Hong Kong because we also, one reason is we try to have that quick service and for guys that are coming in and out in 48, 72 hours. Um, and, uh, and also the fact that, you know, our seamstresses and our cutters that have been working for us for 20, 30 years are all Hong Kong. Yeah. And yeah. we're not going to move keep our, yeah, you have to keep that. So. Okay. Fantastic. Well, um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, it's been amazing. Thank you to everyone for coming and sitting through it. Thank you very much to our speakers, to Darren, to Justin, to Luca, to Jack, and to Paolo. Um, I hope you enjoyed the symposium. Um, we'll have some drinks and food outside. Please join us afterwards. Thank you very much.